In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do the basket weave. And the basket weave is called the basket weave because it kind of looks like the concept of a wicker basket. This concept is actually a very simple idea, and it's actually the same on both sides. So no matter what you do on one side, it's going to look like the basket weave on the other. There's advantages of doing that basket weave in kind of ideas. It actually makes your yarn a lot more thicker. And because the uh, lines are overlapping each other, it causes it to double its thickness, therefore being a bit warmer, plus giving it some pretty cool ideas as far as uh, design effects. So let's get started on learning how to do the basket weave. So let's start off with our slip knot. Hey everybody, it's Mikey from Mikey's Mail. In today's tutorial, on behalf of all three crochet and I, we'd like to introduce you to the basket weave. So starting off with the slip knot, and for more free patterns or crochet ideas, check out allfreecrochet.com. So we want to look at this pattern, it's in sets of four, it sets of eight. So this is four, 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 four. But when you look at two together, it's an eight. So one, so you want, in order to make this happen, look like this, you need four to go down. So that's why they say it's in sets of eight. So eight, eight, and eight. But what we need to pay attention to is we need extra on the sides of each side. There's a little bit too much extra in this particular example. But what we want to do is we want to keep it in sets of eight and then add two at the rest end of the line. So let's uh, keep that. So let's get going. So this is not one. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's your first set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's your next set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you just want to keep going to the distance, keeping them in the sets of eight. And at the very end, what we want to do now is that we want to add one or two extra. One is for this side and one is for the other side of this basket weave. So one and two. And now what we want to do, and I'm holding my finger and my thumb strategically right here so that I remember because what's going to happen is that the video is going to flip and I'm going to tell you to go to the third from the hook. But if you hold your finger there right now and just go one, two, three, you won't need to worry about counting the third back from the hook because your finger is and thumb is indicating where it is. So let's move on to your next set. So what we want to do now is that we want to look at this. In order to create this pattern, we need to double crochet to give ourselves a stability of a line to coming back across. So all we need to do is grab the material and counting either third from the chain, so third one down, or where you left your finger and your thumb. And it go down into the actual chain, grabbing through, pull through two and two. So that was a double crochet. So let's do it again. So into the next chain, through, pulling it through, two and two. So grabbing it. So do this, pulling it through, two and two. So do this now into the end of the line. We'll catch back up, we'll turn around, and we'll get you started on your first line of doing the basket weave. Okay, we've now come to the end of the line. It certainly doesn't look like the basket weave, does it? But this is our established foundation row. We need to now then turn it and begin. Now we need to understand terminology and we have posts and the posts are the gaps in between each of the, the bottom layers. So you see like a, a row of string. It's almost like a train track and then you see another one on the top. Well, the things that are joining the top and the bottom are called the posts. And we're gonna be working on the front post and the back post. So in order to create this next line, we need to double crochet. And normally when we start a line, we actually double or chain three. But in this case, we're only gonna chain two. And the reason for it is that because we're working on the back post way down here and not up here, just like this is started up here, because we're coming down, if you chain up three, you're gonna have your material cre creating like this on the edges, creating your work to be distorted. So now let's grab the material and we're going to start. You can see this is on the front post. You can see that because the other one is sunk in behind. So that's the back post. So front, back, front, back. So let's grab it from the front. So slicking, so pulling it apart, grabbing the material and going into the one side of the post and then back out the other side, pulling it through, pull through two and two. And now remember I said it's in groups of four. So you want to do that at least four times. So it's going into the very next one, popping, popping it through. So I'm making it look a lot easier than it is. Getting used to working with the back and the front post can be a little bit challenging. So you wanna be able to uh, just get used to actually doing it yourself. 
So let's do four in a row. So that was number three. And you can see clearly that that's only three done so far. So it's a pattern that doesn't get easily lost in the, in the ideas. Okay, so the next one, we've just done our four. So now we're gonna work in behind, just like so. And we're just gonna grab the material and now coming from the behind, sticking your needle out through the front of your work, popping it back out to the back to grab the back post, pulling it through two and two. So now you can see that that pulled this string, the string now looks uh, distorted, it's being pulled backwards. And you'll see that a line is now forming right in the front. And that's what those lines are here. So let's do that again. We want to do that four times. So grabbing it from the back, pulling it through two, and two. So that was number two. So you'll notice that that line in the front looks really unusual, doesn't it? Because it looks like it's sticking right out your face and looks like it's all messed up. But in actual fact, it'll settle down within the next line to pull itself backward. So now we just did the four back posts. So now let's do the front post again for another four. So wrapping the material, going to the very next post available, grabbing it from the front. And you want to do that four times. So you just want to keep going back and forth, four to the front, four to the back, and we want to keep doing that until the end of the line. So the next one, there is your four, so let's go and do the back. So grabbing it, coming from the back side, coming into the front, and then flipping it back out to the back again for a double crochet, and continue to do that. You'll find that once you do one back and pulling it from the back, the other one kind of actually pulls itself backward on its own, making it easier to grab. So you'll notice that there's a, it's actually a really easy pattern because once you do the one post, the other posts tend to follow suit. And now we're going to come back and do the front again. So just come in from the front side, the in, pop out. And keep doing that please until the end of the line. And uh, I'm going to pick back up just before you finish and we'll show you how to do the edging. Now in my case, I and I have now three back posts here and now I still have two more to go and the edge. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I got a mistake here. It means that I've got one extra post here. So what am I gonna do? Am I gonna panic attack? Nah, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come from behind and not only am I gonna grab one post, but I'm gonna grab both of them and drag them both together, just like so. And yes, I am so cheating right now, but it's okay. And uh, what I want to do is I want to pull those together so that my pattern looks consistent as I go along. So now we just have the last chain to go and we're just going to grab the material and we're going to half double crochet. Do not go into this gap because that'll separate your work. Go into the side chain, pulling it through and then pull through. So now that, that was my way of fixing my very bottom edge so that my edging in the bottom looks consistent. So yes, it's cheating, but you know, sometimes you can't get it right always the first time and there's more viewers that do that than get it right the first time. So let's uh, continue along to your next line. Okay, so we're just gonna turn our material just like where we left off. And now we're, you can really see that this line is really popping out in here. And again, that'll settle down as we go along. Now each one of these basket weaves are actually three lines. So we just uh, completed one of the lines of the three. Okay, so every time we get, so what I would do is on a piece of paper, write one, two, and three, and just check off every time you complete a line and then just uh, keep doing that. So we wanna look at it now and we're gonna start off. And so then these ribs are kind of like facing towards you and when you turn it back around, you can see that that is indeed um, coming forward. So let's chain up our two. Just we're always gonna chain two when we go to turn. And because these ribs are on the front side, I wanna maintain them on the front side for at least three lines. So this is the second line of the actual three lines, okay? So if it's on the front now, you wanna maintain it on the front, and if it's on the back, you wanna maintain it on the back. So just grabbing it from the front posts, from the front side. 